Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know my betting philosophy. Every week in the NFL, you should be looking for casino mispricings on futures plays. Why futures plays? Because that's where you get outrageous leverage, right? Not just five to one, but 10 to one on quality teams, sometimes 20 to one, 30 to one and higher. This year, if you watch the futures market on the Carolina Panthers, if you thought at the beginning of the season that Carolina had an above average defense, had an above average offense, had an above average coach, and if you saw them open at one and three and you kept an eye on the futures market, you got the Carolina Panthers at outrageous odds. Well, every week, the futures market has outrageous odds on quality teams, well-positioned teams. And keep in mind, it can't hurt to have a quality team that makes the playoffs that's well-positioned at outrageous odds, right? 10 to 1 or higher. And then, of course, when their game comes along and they play a better known team, let's say at Denver or New England, you're able to hedge the play. Why? Because your expected winnings or possible winnings on your play are huge. You know, 10 to 1, what have you, if your team wins it all. So, in the game that they have against the experienced team, you can say, okay, well, I bet one dollar to win ten. Let me pick the other team in this playoff matchup for three dollars, and then of course you end up netting three minus the vig minus the dollar you picked on your long shot play. Well, there's an outstanding play right now because of what happened last weekend. Right, last weekend the Cincinnati Bengals beat the Indianapolis Colts. Cincinnati now at nine and four has the clear inside track to the three seed in the AFC, right? And that's important because the AFC looks much shakier than the NFC, right? Seattle might be the best team in the whole thing. In the NFC, you have some dominant defenses out there. You heard me mention Carolina earlier. San Francisco's defense is not chopped liver, right? The Saints at home, hard to argue with that situation. The AFC, though, very different, right? Peyton Manning, let's face it, the numbers speak for themselves. He has a below 500 record in the playoffs. Let's face it, the numbers speak for themselves. His defense this year is average. The New England Patriots, is this a football team or is this General Hospital, right? Aaron Dobson out. Uh, now we have Rob Gronkowski, torn ACL. He's out. Folks, these are key members of the team, right? Key members of the team. Uh, Vince Wolfert, he's out. You know, the team is injured. Some of their key players are just coming back. Shane Vereen. Right? The team hasn't had a chance to play with any level of continuity all year long because of injuries. Right now, they're the two seed in the AFC. By the way, I do believe privately that the Patriots are an excellent futures play, just talking outside the parameters of this video. But in any event, let's look at Cincinnati. Would it surprise you to know that even though Cincinnati right now, if the season ended today, would be the three seed in the AFC. Keep in mind, the four seed are the Indianapolis Colts, who they beat and who have a worse record than them. Right? So Cincinnati definitely has the inside track on the three seed. They're going to be the AFC North champion. Right? Would it surprise you to know that right now Las Vegas casinos are giving you the Bengals at 14 to 1? This is after week 14. 
they're giving you the Bengals at 14 to 1 to win the whole thing. I think you need to take the Bengals right here. You need to add the Bengals right here at this price to your bet portfolio. You know what? The risk of Indianapolis challenging them has been resolved. Indianapolis just lost to them. Also, the Bengals have three winnable games left. Their next game at Pittsburgh, below 500 Pittsburgh. The game after that, at home, against below 500 Minnesota. The last game at, of the season, at home, against Baltimore. Now, Baltimore's dangerous, but it's 7-6. and six. Baltimore needs to win every game to have a realistic shot of making the playoffs. Here's the problem Baltimore has. Next week, they play the Detroit Lions in Detroit. The week after that, they play the New England Patriots. There is a chance that Baltimore loses one, if not both of those games. They might be knocked out of the playoffs by the time they face the Cincinnati Bengals the last game of the season. And even if they're not knocked out of the playoffs, they're playing the Bengals in Cincinnati where the Bengals are dominant. Look at their home record, right? So for the casinos to be giving you 14 to 1, those odds are tasty. They're rich for such a high quality team. Keep in mind too, the three seed is interesting. You want to be ahead of the curve. Figure it out. The three seed means that Cincinnati wouldn't have to face the Denver Broncos in the playoffs unless it's for the AFC Championship, right? Because the three seed would play the two seed, the New England Patriots. If something happens to the Patriots, if the Patriots can't recover from Rob Gronkowski getting injured, and keep in mind, Gronk is one of the league's preeminent red zone threats. If New England slips, if New England loses to Baltimore, for example, if Cincinnati can catch and pass New England and become the two seed, what that means is in the AFC semifinal, Cincinnati would be hosting the game. The only possible game where they would be on the road would be if they had to face the one seed, the Denver Broncos. Let's also look at the talent Cincinnati has. Defensively, they're a vastly superior team to the Denver Broncos. In fact, dare I say, of the top-rated teams in the AFC, Denver has by far the worst defense. Well, what do I mean when I say a superior defensive team? Did you know in their last four games, the Bengals have only given up 100 yards rushing to the opposing team once? Did you know? In terms of how good the team is in general, that Cincinnati has only lost twice in something like the last two months. And both of those losses were in overtime on the road. Did you know that Andy Dalton, who some people confuse with Alex Smith, right? You hear that Dalton is supposed to be a caretaker. Did you know that Andy Dalton is well on his way to finishing this season with more than 4,000 passing yards? Folks, we've just finished week 14. He has thrown for 25 touchdowns. By the way, he's only thrown 16 interceptions. Let's talk about running the football. You might look at Ben Jarvis Green Ellis's numbers and you might say, oh, gee, he's not getting a lot of yards to carry. Did you know that this team also has Giovanni Bernard running the football? Did you know that Giovanni Bernard, like Ben Jarvis Green Ellis, also has more than 600 rushing yards? But did you know that Bernard is averaging 4.7 yards a carry? And did you know that Bernard has more than 400 receiving yards? Speaking of receiving, did you know that right now, after week 14, 
Bengal wide receiver A.J. Green has 1,175 receiving yards. Think about that. This guy's a Pro Bowl wide receiver. So the Bengals have weapons, the Bengals have a defense, the Bengals have the inside track on the three seed and can possibly improve that to the two seed. Realistically, in the AFC, they have an easy schedule that has them playing the last two games at home. But yet, as of right now, December the 10th, 2013, the casinos in the futures market are giving you the Bengals at 14 to 1. Now this play is really for sophisticated gamblers. I don't want to hear from the unsophisticated crowd telling me, oh, the Bengals can't beat the Seahawks in a Super Bowl. You know what? By the time the Bengals were to have gotten that far, if they get that far, you should have already made back more than 100% of your money. Understand, if you start the playoffs and you're, giving, you're given 14 to 1 odds, you could literally pick the opponent who's playing the, your play, right? Who's playing the Bengals as a hedge. And if there's an upset, you should do better than break even. Not only that, if you've been picking long shots for whom the casino has given you leverage, then you've received outsized odds on many of the teams that are going to make the playoffs in the NFL, right? Again, just look at the odds that were being offered for the Carolina Panthers earlier in the year. Right now, just look at the odds being offered for the Kansas City Chiefs, right? The goal here is to have big-time leverage on a few teams when you get in the playoffs and then to be able to hedge the play, right? I think the best team in football right now are the Seattle Seahawks. I don't expect Cincinnati to win the NFL title. But I like a position in Cincinnati. Because whether they win or not at these odds, if they make the playoffs, I'll make my money back. And then so. And isn't that the goal? Beating the casino. Crunch the numbers. Take a look at it. Understand, too, that New England is 10-3. and three, Cincinnati's 9-4. and four. New England's only a game ahead of Cincinnati. And New England just suffered arguably its most devastating injury of the year in losing Rob Gronkowski. Torn ACL, he's not coming back, folks. The casinos, curiously, are giving you 14 to 1 on the Bengals. You need to add that to your bet portfolio this week. Let me know what you think. Thanks for stopping by.